Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts as we build a social enterprise to fight corruption, food insecurity, and support farmers. On this episode, we have successfully cycled our aquaponic system and now we are bearing the fruits of our labor and it is wonderful. With that success, we wanted to make sure that the farm was just as beautiful as the concept itself. So we are working on the riprap, some circular staircasing that we pretty much designed one at a time, envisioned it, put it together, felt it out, and literally just followed our hearts and how it conceptualized and came to life. I would not recommend this for anybody. I would go with plans and stick to the plans. But for us, we had experience in construction. So we were able to express our design and our vision with technicality. And Cheryl and I, we work great that way. She is a visionary. She knows what colors, how she wants things to look. And I am the one that's really technical and I know how to put things together. So she is the visual person and I am very technical. So we together play off each other's strengths and we were able to design and teach these guys how to do things and for them to witness it come to life was just a fun, fun process for us. A part of the beautification process was us planting new carabao grass around the planters. This is a great way to fill in the space, have the colors pop, and also carabao grass is very hardy. You can walk on it. It's a great ground cover, spreads real easily, it doesn't grow real tall. So it was our choice to surround the planters with this green lush grass. The way they did it was they went to the neighbor's lot, cut squares out, and brought it over. Yes, they got permission. With it being rainy season, caribou grass was great and it spread and actually filled in the spot really well to this day. It was a bit bare, lots of mud, but it was worth it. Aside from the grass, we had plenty of green stuff growing around and I can even tell you what is what. I just knew that we had to maintain it and in order to maintain it, I decided to get some goats. They are nature's best lawn mower. So we are getting utility goats. Even though these are meat goats, not used for milk, we've got these just so that they can help maintain the land. And this is a great way to keep your landscaping under control and they'll just nibble and eat all this grass. So meet our lawn mowers. Goats just do that thing and then they defecate and then that turns into fertilizer. So they were my choice. And if I get hungry, sorry guys, I'm a meat eater. They could be on the table, but for now they have been safe and enjoying and growing on our farm. We still had a lot to learn about the system. Everything was looking really good. And I'll tell you what, you get pretty confident. And then after that, something comes up and is a blow to your ego. But that's a part of the process is the ups and downs. And for every down you learn and for the ups you celebrate. And the farmers are still amazed of this sorcery that they call aquaponics. So you definitely want to check your system out often. Uh, about We try to do it about once a week. Sometimes if we skip a week uh, when everything's looking good. It's also great to really get down to the science and test all the stuff. Again, this has been a few, a few minutes here. Nothing has changed. And we have a couple hundred small fish. We've been cycling this three times. We slowed it down to two because I've over cycled meaning I've over watered some of the plants and devastated a couple of the crops. So learned my lesson, but at the same time, I'm still observing. And again, this is our first attempt at building this aquaponic system. So I'm still learning a lot. And the best way to do that is just be there, observe, try new things out, plant new things, see how the vegetables and fruits are growing and just be consistent with everything. But observation definitely will help you. Testing will reassure you. On the vegetable side, the first fruits were the cucumbers and okra and long beans, and they were just producing really quickly, pretty much surprising all of us. In the next step, we're gonna be planting arugula, cherry tomatoes, and a variety of plants that you rarely see in the Philippines. 
So I want to ask you, the audience, what you would like to see in this aquaponic system for us to test out to see what works. And I will get some seeds and I will plant and care for and see what we can do to make that a reality. The floating stairs is a great touch that Cheryl designed. We're making it look like it's floating. So we just have these posts in the middle of the stairs with big anchors in the bottom and they branch out with rebar and then they pour concrete and we finish it with the pebble look on top. And it looks really cool because it's just a stairway that looks like it's floating and it's leading up to the farm. We're gonna surround it with plants and it is gonna be Instagrammable. For better or for learning, we decided to add a bunch of tilapia. We bought about 1,500 little, little baby fingerlings to add to the aquaponic system. We've got about 1,500 little fingerlings. Our other tilapia there, we're probably gonna move to the other pond. We are looking good to be able to transfer this real soon here. What we did was we made a little net that separates this. So we took a little shade net and we took this one inch pipe, pretty much put a piece of rebar in a pipe and put it on the bottom. And then that'll separate the bigger fish from the smaller fish. I'm not too worried about the fish eating the fish because we feed it a, a generous amount. But what I am afraid of is that these- Get sucked up. Exactly. Because why? They're so small, the nets are, they're so small they'll fit through this. And once they got a little bit bigger, about two to three inches, we would release it into the pools and they would be happily swimming around and not constricted to a small area. Something that we really have to consider is how much ammonia these little guys are gonna create. I figured some of them weren't gonna survive and that it was gonna take time for them to get a little bit bigger. But once they got bigger, there was so much, so much poop that they created a lot of ammonia and we had influxes of nitrates, which can be poisonous to our fish. With the first set of ponds and planters set up and cycled, we were ready to tackle the second pond. We filled the pond up with a bunch of carabao poop in cotton sacks and we let it soak so that it can create the ammonia. The awesome part is we were able to take some of the rocks from the first set of planters and put about 10 buckets in each planters to jumpstart the bacterial process and growth. So with the cultured rocks with some of the bacteria already in it, ammonia seeping into the water and getting cycled into that rocks to feed, creating nitrites and nitrates, we are ready to expand our planting and our crops. I learned that the little fingerlings did not produce enough ammonia and our plants looked like they were suffering with a little bit of deficiency, so I decided to add some ammonia manually. The chicken poop and the carabao poop released some, but in order to speed up the process and not kill the plants that we already had, we actually had to add some ammonia. That is my bad and that is a learning experience. And that's me being impatient because honestly, our consultant said, hold off on planting too much, hold off from adding fish, and I just couldn't wait. Sorry, Aaron. Successfully have added ammonia and we're at about one to two PPMs per milligram of liter per liter, which is awesome. That's controlled. That's not adding too much. We're not going above, which the fish can't handle. The fish will be perfectly fine. And now we'll see if this ammonia get cycled through. We added fish, the plants are growing and producing. We have goats, we have a pig. Places coming together and looking really good and we're working on the design, layout and landscaping. This season just felt like an amazing, fruitful season of joy, happiness, excitement, and it was felt by the whole team. We started to plant new seeds and sprouting them and our curiosity just carried us forward. Um, we're learning a lot about what our system can grow and what belongs in what area and what needs sunlight, what needs less sunlight, how much water the system needs for each plant so that way we can control the pumps, knowing how much needs to go through the cycling of each planter for each plant that we plant inside of it. So if you guys have any questions, please remark down below and we'll try to get to that. If you guys want to see anything cool grown in these systems, let us know and we'll try that also. And the goal of that all is to find the best crops that grow in this with the best yield that creates the best profitability. So that way we can 
make sure that the farm not only produces in a healthy way for the world and for organic food for people and it's good for the environment but also that we can make a profit and make a living off of this and teach other farmers join us as we continue to grow and plant seeds of hope soak it all up because we went so fast that we didn't prepare for the next corner and we paid the price we had to let a few of the workers go and take a season where we had to slow down and i was devastated okay hey guys yes, sir. i wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart i apologize that we had to pause it's, i will be better planned next time but once we start again we're gonna do some amazing stuff. I will work very hard to get everybody back going no later than January, but once we start in January, we're gonna go complete with the project. So once we complete the plans, the approval, we'll get going. I already told everybody I couldn't get this far without you guys. I didn't know how fast we were gonna build this. You guys are really good. You guys listened to the plans. You guys believed in it, even though you guys didn't know what it was. And now you see the fish, now you see the plants. And that is what we're going to hopefully train the new farmers here in the hole. We really need to find a new way. We need to fight the middlemen. That is corrupt. Some middlemen are okay, but a lot of them are just making money for themselves. We have to make the politicians accountable to help the people. And I will be here to help you guys. So I'm investing my life into this for my next five years. So you guys, thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you guys for working hard. And I will do the same for you guys, especially once we launch and everybody sees this place. So thank you guys. I am grateful. I can't wait until the new year starts. And if I can make it happen sooner, I will. I'll see you guys soon. This is not goodbye. It is see you later because we have a lot of work to do. So since it's not goodbye, it's let's continue on. <laughs> In our next episode, we'll share what happened and where we went from there. Thank you again for following us on this pursuit and we'll see you on the next one.